Hey guys, this is Damien Verrett. I go by the stage name So Much Light. I'm a singer, songwriter, slash producer. I'm here with DMA today to teach you guys how to set up an Ableton Live session for live looping using our computer keyboard instead of a MIDI controller. So with this live set, you'll be able to just whip out your laptop, jot some ideas down, loop them, trigger samples, and record it all simultaneously as a sort of like the perfect portable songwriting tool. So let's get started with that. You'll notice in my Ableton Live session, I have a channel called Ignore Me in here. This is just what I'm using to record my voice to sync it up later. So please ignore that channel. Your Ableton session will be empty. So first things first, I'm gonna add four MIDI tracks and you'll see that the hotkey for that is Control Shift T. So that's what I'm gonna be using to add the remaining three, Control Shift T, one, two, three. So now we have four MIDI tracks. I'm gonna rename them all, get everything set up nice and neat. So just follow along. I'll rename the first one with Control R, Instrument Rack. Then I'll just hit enter and hit the right arrow key over. I'm just gonna kind of emphasize a really quick hotkey oriented workflow just to get you guys in that mode. So now we have four tracks all named appropriately. We need to record enable each of them by clicking this little circular button at the bottom and making that icon red. And then I'm gonna change the monitor mode for our instrument rack to in drums to off, bass to off, keys to off. So that'll make more sense later. Once we have samples recorded into those tracks, those uh, monitor settings will be more helpful to us. Uh, because I changed the monitor setting to off, I have to re-enable the record button. So sorry about that, I messed that up. So now we're gonna start adding some instruments in. We want to house all of our instruments inside of an instrument rack so that we're able to really quickly cycle through patches. So I'm gonna go into our instruments browser, come on down to instrument rack. You don't wanna take any of these ones from the drop down menu, those are all presets. We want an empty instrument rack. So what we're gonna do is just click instrument rack, drag it over to that channel. And now we have our instrument rack there. I'm gonna expand it by clicking this little menu icon. And now this region is where we're going to drop our instruments. First off, let's get some drums. I always like to use the 808 drum kit, but you can use whatever you prefer. I'm gonna click that, drag it into this little box. You'll see the black border pop up. That means that you've, you're in the right place. Drop that in there. We want some bass sounds too. So I'm just gonna use the things I tend to like already. I'll drop down analog, drop down bass, and then it's here in dual oscillator rubber band. Drop that into the instrument rack. And then to select our keys, I'm gonna really quickly demonstrate a cool function that Ableton has called the hot swap feature. Before we get to that, I'm gonna turn on this icon here. This allows us to use our computer keyboard in place of piano keys. And I'll put a graphic on screen to show how those keys correspond with the piano notes. Cool, so let's pick a keys sample. I'll go into instruments. I think what I want is an analog, go to piano and keys, and then let's just drop something in there. Let's drop in the Calio. And let's hit the solo button so that we're only listening to the sample that we're interested in auditioning. And you'll hear that that sample's really low right now. That instrument is being played in a really low register that isn't probably what we're gonna be utilizing. On a MIDI keyboard, they always have these octave down, octave up buttons. And in place of that on the keyboard, Ableton does a good job of kind of approximating all of the same functions as a MIDI keyboard. We're going to be using Z for octave down and X for octave up. So I'm gonna hit the X button to go up two octaves. So that's kind of a cool sound. but I think I want something that's a little less sustained. So the hot swap feature is really cool for this. You're just gonna hit the Q button right here, uh, the Q key, and now you're in hot swap mode. And all you have to do to swap out the selected sample is double click on the desired instrument you want to exchange it for. So I really like the muted one pure sound. 
So I'm gonna hold on to that. And that was the hot swap mode. All you gotta do to turn it off is hit Q. So now we have all of our instruments in our instrument rack. I'm gonna unsolo the piano and kind of demonstrate a problem we have right now. So I don't know if you can hear that, but as I play through on my piano keys, it's triggering all three instruments simultaneously. So we're gonna enter our chain selector. You click this little chain button right here. Right now, everything is set to the same value. Our drums, I'll rename everything just so it's a little more clear. Our drums, bass, and piano all have the same chain selector value, which is indicated by this little blue bar. So we want those all to be different. I'm gonna click and drag the bass to value one and click and drag the piano to value two. And now you can hear, now we're just controlling the drums, but how do we get to those other instruments now? And it's really simple. We're just gonna click this key button up in the right hand corner and that brings up our keyboard mappings. So if you're familiar with Ableton, you know that when you use a MIDI controller, you can map any button on your MIDI controller to any button or slider or knob in Ableton simply by clicking the knob and then like wiggling the uh, corresponding knob on your MIDI controller or pressing a button. So we're gonna do a similar thing with the chain selector. I'm just gonna come down here to this bar. You can see it's highlighted in orange. I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna hit the period key. I like using the period key to adjust my chain selector because it's out of the way from the keys that you're playing to, to control your notes. It's out of the way from what I'm gonna be using to trigger my samples. It's just kind of tucked away in a nice spot where I'm not gonna hit by accident. So now we can exit out of this menu and here's our drums. And now I'm gonna hit the period key to cycle to the bass. And now I'm gonna hit the period again to cycle to our keys. But now when I hit the period key one more time, it's gonna go to chain selector value three, which is empty. We don't have anything in that, in that chain. So what we wanna do is come back into the keyboard mapping change the maximum value to two because the furthest we go on our chain selector is two where the piano is. So now drums, bass, and keys. This concludes part one of the tutorial. If you wanna continue working on this project, you can proceed to part two and I'll show you how to finish up.